You're listening to the Wired for Impact podcast. Each and every one of us are as healthy as we believe that we should be. Each and every one of us are in the relationships, whether they're fulfilling or degrading, as we feel worthy of. Each of us have the bank accounts that we feel comfortable with right now. So each of us are in our comfort zones, health, relationships, and finances right now. We are exactly where we feel worthy. Which is a tough pill to swallow because there's people that have you know, strained relationships or they're living paycheck to paycheck and they're saying, why, <laughs> what, what do you mean I'm in my comfort zone? This doesn't feel very comfortable at all. Can you expand on that a little bit? My old me would have been argumentative with that. No, I'm not. Yep. Yep. No, I'm not. And I wouldn't have accepted that as a reality. And now, and I raise my hand because here's my other belief. None of us, regardless of any level of success, nothing takes away problems and challenges. As a matter of fact, life is the ultimate level upper. Like if you think of playing Mario Kart or any any video game and there's level one, level two, level three, life doesn't stop. It doesn't say, oh, okay, yeah, you've learned all you need to learn. It's continually leveling you up, which means you're you're always going to have bigger, harder, more pressing challenges. And you're you're either in some serious challenges now with your health, your relationships, or your finances, just coming out of some big ones, or there's some big ones right around the corner. And things are happening at such a fast pace in today's day and age it's all three. We're just coming out of some big things. There's some big things happening now. And there's some big things around the corner. Like that's just, mm -hmm. that's how the world, I mean, I'm 51. I remember the news cycle would have a big event once a quarter, like this big thing happened. And we're talking about it for three months. No, now it's it, day, multiple big day, events yeah. every day. It's yeah. all, it's like we live in the most, it's, it's just a crazy time. Uncertainty is at all time highs, right? Mm -hmm. So so I'm, I'm saying this to let you know, there's no level of success that eliminates chaos, problems, and challenges. And not just little ones. As you grow, more money, more problems. It takes a proactive approach. And it takes someone who has to step into the, I'm only in charge of three things in my life, at least from my perspective. My thoughts, my words, my actions. Are my thoughts, my words, and my actions on track with the goals and desires that I have, they either are or they aren't, right? And that leads back to, are you clear on what is your goal for your health? And it's not just the reflection in the mirror. I'm talking mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. Those are important. That's the foundation of your life. And the next, in my opinion, is your relationships. First and foremost, the relationship with you and yourself, working on healing those wounds, working on being that best version of yourself, working on loving yourself. This was a big one for me. I was very forgiving with friends and family members who would screw me over in a big way. And I would forgive them. What I came to find out in my journey that I was not forgiving myself. Mm -hmm. I was I was beating myself up and not forgiving myself. So I would be super forgiving for people, but I wouldn't be forgiving to myself. And there comes a point where, and and and, I'm, and by the way, I'm not stating I've I'm fully got this down. There's still things that I'm healing from in my past, and and not just with others and experiences and, and circumstances, but with my own forgiveness of myself. I'm a work in progress until I'm dead and buried. My goal is to just be a little bit better today than I was yesterday, and mm -hmm. and a little bit each day compounds into you're a whole different person in a year and in ten years, right? And so my other my other perspective is I'm of the belief that. There's a version of us 10 and 20 years from now that ranges from dead and gone to multi-billionaire status and everything in between. And not just the money, but we're talking optimal health, optimal relationships, optimal finances. And it's up to us to determine where am I now and where do I see, you know, reasonably, like I'm not going to be the tr first trillionaire, like that's, that's just ridiculous, but here's where I feel I can be. Mm -hmm. And put that line 20 years to the future. That's where I'm going to be. That's the optimal health optimal relationships and optimal financial situation, which circles back to the thoughts, words, and actions that I'm currently doing. Mm. So there's two important conversations I would recommend you have with yourself. One is the one with you now and yourself 20 years ago. And just picture where, and it's, it's kind of simple now. It's a little, it's a little more than 20 years, but you know exactly where you were on September 11th, 2001. Mm -hmm. Those that are old enough to, to, to remember that, like, you know, where the heck you were, what, would you give as advice to yourself? Maybe that wasn't your deepest, darkest time period, but what advice would you give and comfort would you give to yourself if you were a true friend and, and a wise friend who really cares and loves you? What advice would you tell that version of yourself 20 years ago? Right. Mm -hmm. And if I like it's man, like, dude, you got a wild journey ahead, bro. But it, listen, some things will look like this is the end of the road. Well, I guess it's all over now, you know, but you are a kick butt problem solver. You are someone who cares. You are someone who delivers value. So you know what? 
stand up, dust yourself off, stand tall, get your breath, get grounded and get clear on where you're going next. What's next? What's next? What's next? And one step at a time, you're going to meet the right people. You're going to have the right experiences. And wow, it's going to, your dreams are going to be, you know, wildly, you're going to be amazed, but it's going to take a lot of hardship. It's going to take a lot of perseverance. It's going to take a lot of dedication, but you got this. Just stay strong. Mm -hmm. What would be that advice you tell yourself 20 years ago? And then picture that best version of yourself. What advice would that version come back and tell you right now? I did this when I was 40 and that 60 year old version of me, the Marine came back. He was pissed. It's like, dude, you better get your stuff together. Mm -hmm. You are not walking in alignment. You are talking a lot, but you're not following through with the proper actions. And you're not going to get here if you keep doing what you're doing. So either square your stuff away or find a, another future version because you ain't going to make it here. <laughs> then when I got to 50, my 70-year-old version was like, yeah, you're doing the right thing. You're on the right path. Yes, there's still going to be hardships. Yes, life continually levels you up. Yes, there's going to be challenges that will put you on your knees. And that's exactly where you need to be which is, by the way, the same advice Zig Ziglar gave me uh, in October of 2001. I was fortunate to pay for a breakfast at the a Peter Lowe success event a month after September 11th happened. They canceled the event after the whole chaos happened. They rescheduled it. And I was, at the time, the publisher of the North Carolina Home Book. For anyone looking to build or remodel or decorate their million-dollar-plus home in Charlotte, Greensboro, or Raleigh-Durham, I was the, the, the publisher, the, the manager of that location, but my regional manager was a total prick and he told me, if you go to that event, you may not have a job when you come back. So here, I'm, by the way, at this time, uh, I had a baby on the way. I had just gotten married to this mother of my child. I had just bought my first new home. I had a duplex up in New York. So this is my second home, but my first single family home, Prime brand new. Reasons. Yep. And and he's now threatening me with my job. So on paper and and with all common sense, I should have not gone. But my heart told me you need to go. Like, here, just think about it. Just a few weeks after September 11th, the, the talk about uncertainty, like the whole world shut down and we didn't know what to do. I said, well, on the way there, I'm like, well, JD, if I don't have a job when I come back, that would really suck. You know, I just recently married. I got a baby on the way. I got a new house. I, I don't know what I do, but I'll figure it out. But I just feel I need to be there. Well, you can go to the next one. I'm like, I don't know if there's going to be a next one. So I went and I paid extra for a breakfast with Zig Ziglar. You know, you get into the breakfast area. There's about hundred plus people there shake his hand, you get a picture, you get to talk for a second, then you're escorted to the table. I'm sitting at the table, there's a lot of cool people there, we're having conversations. I look over, I see Zig standing by himself by the door. And there's people talking, I said, excuse me, gentlemen, get up, I start walking over there. They're like, is he allowed to do that? And I didn't know if I was allowed to do it either, but I was not going to miss this opportunity. So I went over and I, I said, Mr. Ziegler, I just want to say, you have been such a powerful impact in my life through your audios, through your books, through your videos. Like You're like my dad or grandfather that I, I don't didn't really have. And I just want to say thank you. And I said, but what, what do we do now? After September 11th, what do you do now? He's like, son, do you sell something? I said, yes. I sold advertising for the North Carolina Home Book. Does it provide value to who you sell it to? I said, yes. Well, this put us right on our knees as a country. And that's exactly where we need to be. He said, you need to stand up. You need to go out and you need to sell. You need to create your own economy. He said, the more value you provide, the more you sell, the more the terrorists lose. If, if you stop selling, the terrorists win. So it was, it was a very deep conversation that inspired me to pick myself back up, get out of the uncertainty and just, you know what, that sucked, but I got to keep moving forward. I got to keep selling for me, my family, the, the people that I pro provide value for and to. And so that was a key conversation. But anyhow, I would recommend you have that conversation with yourself 20 years ago and then pick that best version of yourself 20 years from now, have it come back and give you advice. And sometimes that might be some hard to hear advice. Thank you for listening to this episode of Wired for Impact. If you're interested in creating and expanding your impact, be sure to visit us online at impactnow.com.